This is a long one. This is another Z Frank video. It's about sharks. It's 15 minutes long, my God. The curious adaptations of sharks probably talk about tonic immobility, which I talked about in the other video. This right here is a little baby shark. Oh my God. It's cute, isn't it? Rubbing up on that veiny sack. This one was laid as an egg and then abandoned, <laughs> left to fend for itself. So cute. Well, not entirely. The mother. My dream is finding a, um, like a mermaid purse. If you don't, know, that's like the shark slash skate slash ray eggs that are on the beach. Finding one that still has a baby inside of it. It's very rare because usually they don't, they're clung on to something until they wash up. And then when they wash up, it usually means that the baby broke out of it, but, or that it was never um, fertilized in the first place, but it would be so cute. It is a yolk sac and contains enough food to get the baby through to hatching. Provides a bit of comfort too, by the looks of it. Now, shark eggs come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes <laughs> yeah, with cool different one. ways of attaching to crap on the sea floor. This sex toy here is actually the egg of a crested horn shark. And but not even all sharks lay eggs. Lots of sharks do internal. Wow, I really have not, I've ta not taken an ichthyology class in too long. I can't even remember the term for when the sharks don't, you know, are internal eggs versus external. And then there's the thing where the baby sharks eat the other baby sharks. The mom will purposefully get pregnant again so that her older babies can eat the newer baby. There's and a lot of terms to blend in with the Watch my theology videos. Maybe I need to watch my theology. I'm getting lazy. I've been working a job too long. In many species of shark, though, the eggs hatch inside the mother, where the embryos then develop. The embryos start off with yolk sacs, just like the ones you see in eggs. But often the pregnancy lasts longer oh, than that what? food supply does. But baby's got to eat, and the mother has to figure out how to give it more food. Sometimes it's a nutritious mucus. In the case of the great white shark, the mother creates unfertilized eggs, which the embryos can gobble up with their tiny little teeth. Inside, there are often embryos from different fathers. And one thing this baby is doing is looking around for half-brothers and half-sisters to snack on. Not even born yet, they're in a Game of Thrones situation. Nope. Now, apparently the- That's what I was talking about. Except that the, the mother will like purposefully delay getting pregnant. Like they can hold on to sperm and then purposefully delay when they have each baby so that the babies are able to consume each other um, and she can give the best chance of survival to her oldest kids. Usually after the first generation, she's just saving sperm to create food for her, her older kids. Once born, sharks are endowed with a number of amazing adaptations. Many sharks can swim very quickly. Jerry, what's this footage? Well, I'm saying swim quickly and this one's walking. What is it? Epaulet shark? Well, whatever cool. it's called. My favorite shark, probably. I love epaulet shark turn off their brains and save oxygen and walk through tide pools. Oh, it's going to ruin the reputation of the rest of the sharks. Try putting that in a scary movie, Jerry. Look out, shark! Everyone walk at a moderate pace in the opposite direction. <laughs> be a disaster. Like most fish, sharks move their powerful tails back and forth to move forward. But as they move forward, they also have to stay up. Most fishes use swim bladders to stay buoyant. Imagine you swallowed a condom you'd blown up with a Jerry. Why is it a condom, Jerry? It's just a balloon. No, it doesn't make it more relatable. Sounds filthy. Anyway. I've never sharks seen don't a swim bladder, like, not inside of a fish. This is interesting, actually. I've only ever seen, like, while dissecting, I've seen swim bladders. Speaking of which, I've been wanting to do a dissection slash identification video for so damn long, but I can't find the stupid fish that I want to do the video on. I have had multiple friends catch it, and I keep forgetting to tell them. I've told them all now. All of my friends know the next time you catch one to give it, to, like to bring it to me. But the last friend that I forgot to tell caught one, and I was like, oh my god, I had forgotten to tell you, otherwise he would have brought me one. So please, I, I, I need a sand lance. I've been trying so hard to do a fish dissection video. Sharks don't have swim bladders, but they have some tricks to lighten up. They have a very Oil. fatty liver, which helps, and a skeleton made out of cartilage instead of bone. But even with all that, sharks have a tendency towards the sinking. So to stay afloat, many sharks take advantage of lift. Certain shapes at certain angles cause fluids to move more quickly over one surface than the other. You may have heard that the water on top moves faster because it has to reach the end at the same time as the water on the bottom. Science hippies at Cambridge showed that that's just not true. The water on top moves quite a bit farther in the same amount of time. Anyway, the end result is that there's a difference in pressure between the top and the bottom. 
resulting in a force that pushes in the direction of the lower pressure. The fins of many sharks are just the right shape to take advantage of lift. The hammerhead takes advantage of all of it. Here you can see how to put one back together. <laughs> If you break it, you break they will like often swim at an angle, getting it's lift not even like you back can argue together. That they were making an anatomical diagram. These are clearly Lego pieces. <laughs> the way that it slots in. If you break it, they will often swim at an angle, <laughs> getting lift. From... Now you've probably noticed that water can get a bit mushy, mushy when it passes quickly over a fin. This is called mushy, mushy or turbulence. I have an entire ichthyology lesson on locomotion in fishes, which goes over turbulent versus laminar flow and a lot of other fun, somewhat mathematical, but also very consumable to the average person, theories about swimming. If the water gets too swirly swirly, it can be hard to push against it, and it can counteract lift. So sharks have evolved some special tricks to reduce turbulence. Their skin is covered with denticles. Not like denticles of the octopus, but denticles. rather denticles, which are They're made sharp. from exactly the same thing that teeth are made out of. Yeah, I don't know if you guys knew that. Sharks do have scales, but they're not made of the same thing that other fish scales are. Their scales are made of teeth. Their entire body is covered in teeth. They're not exactly teeth, they're just the same material that, you know, has evolved differently, takes a different form, but basically their entire body is covered in teeth. That's why sharks are rough one direction. The net result is that less of the surface of the shark is interacting with the faster flow. This means less drag and more efficient swimming. Now the short fin mako is the fastest shark. If water begins to curl backwards on their skin creating drag, their denticles pop up and trap that backward flowing water, which reduces Ooh. the drag and lets them swim faster. So the denticles are flexible so that they can greater create laminar flow. That's pretty cool, I've never known that. Now other fish figured out that if you rub against the grain, those denticles can be used as an exfoliator. Scratchy scratchy. I mean it comes with some risks I suppose. It's like using a lion's mane for a hand towel. Personally I prefer my conveniences be a Is bit that further they're from doing a set they're scratching off parasites on the shark? That's so funny. I feel like you could just, well, I guess coral will sting you if you're not immune. You could find a rock, right? Surely there's a rock. Surely it's more convenient to not rub yourself against something that is capable of consuming you. Two species of cat shark have cells that fluoresce, meaning that they don't generate light, but rather they take in one wavelength of light and use it to emit a different wavelength of light. In this That's case, so they sick. take in blue. Bioluminescent stuff is so sick. I think I just missed this. I just found out about there being uh, bioluminescent kayaking in Maine. You can go and like kayak through bioluminescent algae and such or bacteria that's so cool i i missed it for this year but it's definitely going to be on my list to do next summer and there's a warm i think i don't know if the season's over yet or it will be soon but yeah i was not able to it'll be cool though i hope to do that males and females have different patterns and it's possible that other fish can't see this light that they emit so the cat shark can be camouflaged for an ambush but perfectly visible to a potential mate like cracking a glow Ooh. stick at a rave to get someone's attention. I have never heard about in any other animal. I'm trying to think of a precedent where you can be visible to mates but camouflage to prey and predators. I'm trying to think of an example of another animal that does that, and I can't think of anything. It's actually really intelligent. Close. Sharks do rely on their vision. The problem to is that's so complicated evolutionarily. Because not only do you have to adapt the ability to glow but you have to adapt the eyes to see the glowing and either one of them is useless without the other one right like if you glow but the other your mates can't see it there's no point point. and if your mates can see the glow but no one glows then there's also no point so how did these things evolve together like it doesn't make any sense that's this oh, evolution is so confusing in that way because both of these things individually are you know, um, worthless, but they're useful when you put them together. So it's like, how did that possibly present an advantage at some point in evolution? So crazy. In a cage and to hunt, but sometimes the water can get murky, and some things that are delicious bury themselves under the sand. To help with this, sharks have another set of sensory organs. Right there, all those little holes that look like a five o'clock shadow. Those uh, are ampullae. Pap ampullae Lorenzini. Crap! I was I was trying to pause the video so that I could say it. Ampule Lorenzini. I had a test on this in, uh, in my ichthyology class in our lab practical. Flipped a shark upside down, and well, a dead shark, um, and pointed at the, the holes and was like, what are those? And that was like question nine on the test. Of Lorenzini, the second most fun to say organ, right behind eyelets of Langerhan. 
The little pores lead to canals which are filled with a conductive jelly. Nerve fibers are in contact with the jelly and can sense small changes in electrical potential or voltage. Hammerheads have a whole bunch of these sensors, up front on their face where evolution stepped on them. Now the sawfish is not a shark, it's a ray, which is closely related. It has sensors all up and down that front bit, its rostrum. It certainly comes in handy when I your eyes are on the top and your sharks. mouth's on the bottom. It uses that rostrum sort of They're like They're so big. If you don't have a concept of how big these fish get and you see one in person, I saw one, what aquarium was it? I think it was the Baltimore Aquarium. They're so big. Old man with a metal detector, you know, out there alone, <laughs> sweeping it back it and forth. It swims by you and it's like twice your size and you're like, holy shit. I thought this thing was like, you know, stingray size. Sometimes doesn't even turn it on, just doesn't want to say hi to people. Now, unlike sawfish, sharks often don't have something to push up against when they catch their food. I mean, eating underwater can be challenging with your food floating around like that. Look at those two little fish <laughs> out on a risky first date. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably avoiding doing some sort of flow thing, too. I wonder if something about the way the shark is swimming, if that helps them save, conserve energy, because they're way too small to be moving that fast normally, it feels like. If you've ever bobbed for apples, then you know what it's like to have a mouthful of other people's saliva. You also know that in water, it can be difficult to get things in your mouth without the use of hands. But sharks have figured out a few ways to go about it. One approach is called ram feeding, but that's different than what this whale shark is doing, which is sucking. called suction feeding. It repeatedly opens its mouth and creates negative pressure, sucking in water and the tiny things that it Crazy. eats. Even whale sharks have 6,000 tiny, tiny teeth. They just stopped using them. Many other sharks, of course, do use their chompers. It's a good set of utensils to have if your leftovers are larger than you are. And listen, if you spend a lot of time chasing something, it's good to be able to hold on when you catch up. One of the most impressive, though, is the cookie cutter shark. There it is, with cookie the old cutter. number two. Cookie cutter shark almost started a nuclear war. <laughs> the two thing, the two living things in the world that have been the closest to causing a nuclear war are John F. Kennedy and the cookie cutter shark. <laughs> Take that fact in for a second. Their bottom teeth are fused, and their mouths appear to be able to create suction. Their bites look like someone used an ice cream scoop. A lot of people say these sharks spin to create that shape, but there's no evidence for that, and it's probably bullshit. Anyway, other sharks, like those in the genus Squatina, got tired of the chase. They bury themselves. But if a fish comes along, it's fucked. I know what you're saying. Where's the fish? Quick, identify the fish, Jack. Naughty bits, just saying. Peritinium. Looks C-shaped. Identify the fish, chat. What are we looking at? Hard to see because of the glare on the peritoneum, but it's definitely not square. No. This is definitely a silver side. I believe it's an Atlantic silver side based on the shape of the peritoneum, but I guess I would have to know the location. If the peritoneum was squared off, I'd consider rough Thumbs silver along. side. It's f***ed. I know what you're saying. What happens when sharks get horny? <laughs> it's the best segue. <laughs> well, I'll tell you forthwith. These are basking sharks and it's thought that this circling is part of their mating behavior. They use signals, like the classic head bob. Yeah, I see you. And if they're into it, they might turn over and show you the rest of the package. It's quite cute, almost refined. With other sharks, it's more like trying to meet someone in a mosh pit at Coachella. It's a f***ing mess. <laughs> that guy knows. The male must insert his double penis. Jerry, it's not a double penis. They're called claspers. I know, but just because it looks like one doesn't mean you know it is. crazy about claspers? Everyone's like, oh, they insert or whatever. Like, everyone assumes that it acts like a penis and that something comes out of the claspers. But the claspers are just like a, a highway. They're like an escalator of sperm. <laughs> Probably the best way I could put it. The sperm just like goes down them like it's going down an escalator. It doesn't actually come out of the claspers. When inserted into the female's cloaca, the ends of the claspers in some species open up like a little umbrella, and a little siphon pumps water and sperm up in there. Fish porn. Yeah, straight up fish porn. Maybe we don't include that in the final cut, Ghost Boy. <laughs> Maybe we don't include the sharks fucking in the final cut. Who knows? You know, I mean, hey, it's up to you, man, but... All right, that is going to be enough for me today. I uh, I'm sick. Have a good have a good night. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon. Bye. Bye.